I found no solution, actually. You know, I found no solution to not being able to work in teams or whatever. Now I'm working alone. To figure out you're not set up to be a constructive team member, that's kind of sad, you know, because you, you like working with people. I'm Thomas Sala, I am the creator and solo dev of The Falconeer and now Bulwark Falconeer Chronicles uh, and you're in my studio. When I was young I played a lot of games and this was in the era of on the mainland we got Amigas, MSX PCs and regular IBM PCs like back then. And games always, I was the kid that uh, sat in class drawing, wasn't really good in school, just always drawing dragons and gruesome shit. When I graduated from high school, I tried a few things, nothing really caught on. There was this one course where you would learn to be a multimedia designer. So this is like mid nineties, early nineties at an art school. I signed up for that, failed to get in, but got in a year later. And my main goal with that was to make video games. I graduated at some point, did graduate with friends. We all wanted to get in games. So we started a studio, but we, you know, we knew nothing. So this is, 2000, I guess, and I'm from the Netherlands and there's historically no big industry here for games. There is some now, but it's all fairly grassroots. And there was people of my generation that went off to America and got into bigger studios. And we actually had no clue. So we started working for advertising agencies and doing like flash games and we 3D web games. We did that for clients for a long time and educational games, medical games, anything anybody would give us money to make video games, we do. In the end, we designed a VR game that got published by Sony for PlayStation VR. And around that time, I sort of had a big burnout. I'd been, just been working for so long. And in that crash, I started modding for Skyrim, just in my spare time. And I made a mod called Moonpath to Elsewhere, which just exploded. And that was a really nice sort of escape from shit not going super well in the rest of my life. And I did that for a couple of years, just making mods and stuff for other modders and art for other modders and enjoyed that and made, got to realize, well, maybe someone might want to pay for things I make by myself rather than getting paid to execute someone else's vision. And that's how I started to experiment with indie games. If you're a creative omnivore, it's very hard to fit in. I suck at managing people, like the worst manager on earth. I'm an artist by trade, so a visual artist. Uh, it's always about executing a visual vision, but I don't mind doing the technical work. And I, I, even in school, I would, in art school, I would get frustrated having to wait for people who are more skilled in programming. Okay, I'll program it myself. Because you know, I'm so eager to get it created. I'm not necessarily interested in what speed you're going. I'm just going at choo-choo speed and you got to keep up with me. There is word amongst free house traders that you offer respite for weary captains. Well, you have me and my ship. Working by myself, I find, is strangely less stressful and more stressful in different places. After I did that modding for Skyrim, which was wildly successful, I wanted to make a indie game, and it was a strategy game called Oberon's Court. And in that game, you play in, in, in purgatory. Uh, and there's all these souls, but everybody in purgatory turns into a sort of an animal uh, representing how they were in life. And then you'd be able to sort of chain those souls and have those creatures become your little sort of uh, strategy game army. So you would collect all these semi-violent creatures and the kings be dragons and there'd be bishops, which were sort of bird-like creatures. I serve only the strong. I realized this wasn't going to work as a game uh, and then I had a little break, cleaned out my life as it were and then afterwards when I looked back at that it was too dark and I couldn't, you know, you can't reconnect with something because it's just representative of quite a dark phase of your life. It existed and then I had to kill it. And then I sat around because, you know, I, I can't be idle for very long and fiddled with all the assets I made. And one of them was a little dragon. I thought, well, okay, okay. Apparently I can't make an RTS game. And I was fiddling at the time for work with uh, landscapes and coloring. So lighting a landscape. 
I said, okay, well, just fly around this landscape, just to get some, I, I'll make a little code for, get this dragon, which I made for this other game, to fly around some landscape, here's some volcanoes, and I'll put it, when you don't have a lot of water, I had some water, that was interesting to work with as a, visually, I just chucked it together and I'll make some flying code. And I looked at it, and go, ah, dragons, everybody does dragons. I thought, giant bird, that'd be cool. So a giant eagle with someone on top, eh, I can do that. Because uh, I've been into birds for the other game a little bit. So I made a new bird and stuck it in. And then the sun came up on this little primitive landscape. And again, okay, this just might be it. In hindsight, it wasn't for me about just making something entertaining, but that is actually a cathartic work of art in a sense. You know, someone in a bird trying to be free and not having to deal with your issues. And then I put the water underneath and I said, okay, that'll be the darkness. To solve stuff, you always have to kind of dive in and sort it. But you don't wanna, you wanna fly off and be free. And when that was done in 2021, I took a little break and then I got bored. Uh, <laughs> when I got bored, it's good. everything gets dark again, I go, uh, and Camille, she said, my partner, we've had so much stress about this game. It was kind of scary and, you know, uh, money had run out. And it was, you know, there's a risk involved in making a video game by yourself. Because uh, I, I wasn't working at that point anymore. So what's the least stressful thing in making that, that you enjoyed the most? Can't you make a game where you're just doing that? Which is a very smart thing to say. So I said, uh, I like making all the little towns and fortresses. I just did that for relaxation, just, you know, like a model maker. Just shaping your world is a very tranquil, creative flow, enjoyable sort of mode to be in. So well, make a game about that. And she said, yeah, you got to make the players become you. I go, what? What? The way you now create these towns and fortresses is in a sort of chaotic, creative, organic way that it's both relaxing and exploratory, and that actually is what the game become. That's what it's about. Both having fun and getting into the flow of designing stuff, which is you know, my life, in a sense. In the Netherlands, water is all around, always. I live next to a canal, the beach is nearby. In the, our culture, it's something to respect in a way. It's, 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 it's like a dangerous thing, because when you drive around here, you're X feet beneath sea level. The risk of flooding is sort of ingrained in the culture. For me, fortresses and castles are always on the seaside or near water or with moats. So that water is definitely a running theme for me, the, the watery landscapes. We don't have mountains here, but the hills and things coming up out of the water. We have a school of painting called the Haagse School from early last century, late century before. I think it's oil paintings and lots of beaches with sailing vessels on them. Uh, ships at sea, and it's a, a very long not cold tradition, I guess, of painting in the Netherlands. Some of my ancestor or my great-great-grandfather was a framer for art and an art dealer. So there's always been a lot of these paintings in the family and we, you know, dragged to museums that had these paintings. So when I look at my own work, if you look at the clouds and the skies, these dark brooding skylines with water and a little shits on them, that's just, I guess, a visual that really stuck with me as being, I guess, very Dutch in a way. My ship and kin have served Dunkel for generations. Dunkel is no more. Within the structured patterns of our industry, someone like me can't survive. It literally burns me out. Uh, I don't want to work that way. When we talk about ADHD or whatever, I, I don't like those words anymore because they frame things as a disorder or and for me they are problematic it's a very difficult subject because you deal with it at different stages of your life and you know uh, this is how i deal with it but i don't think that's an option for everybody i'm of the chaotic persuasion that's what i say and that's that's the truth of it i find it hard to say it's this and that i don't take any medication for anything how i work sometimes confuses people because it doesn't work for teams, it works for Thomas. I work, I've described it as meandering. I figure out if when I'm in a creative flow and I'm building a game or a prototype, it's just to run with it. For 
the Falconeer, I had this ocean and in Bulwark as well, the ships are super important. And at some point I thought, okay, we need some boats. Why? Because I like boats. And that day I woke up and wanted to make a sailing boat. So I make a sailing boat and then I put it in the game and it, it's just sitting there. Okay, okay. Well, it needs to move with the waves. So I'll do that and that's a fairly small task. I'll get it done and I'll be going, oh, that looks super cool, looks super cool. And I've sailed a fair bit in my life in small sports sailing boats. And, and small yachts. So I, I started making that excited and then I've got a little animation of a, of a boat going round and the sails are, you know, it's tacking in the wind. And that excites me because it's a, a very quick reward. Every step you say like, oh, look at the boat, it's in the water and the sails are moving. And two days will pass where I'm just fixated on making all these sales. I mean, even four days, and I go, that's, that's just, oh, it's so excited. And then I'll look at it, okay, okay I made a really accurate sailing boat that's doing stuff on the water. And I have, okay, uh, what, what was I doing again before that? Where, uh, I was actually making missions for this game with flying birds. Well, I'll just stick the sailing boats in the missions. A new home, seeing it prosper fills me with pride. If I go to a, a project manager, yeah, I made this sailing boat and I'm, now I'm gonna make missions with sailing, but it's not on Jira, so why would you spend four days doing that? That's not your task. This is not the design we decided upon a month ago. But I'm super excited and I want to take that excited energy to get something done and use it. You know, when we had Bulwark, I had all these battleships and boats and trading vessels. Because it's just as relaxing as making a little fortress as making a cool boat. The first thing is, let's turn them on when they're sailing around the little castle I made. Oh, that looks so cool. Oh, that's exciting. Oh, the boats. Now, okay, I need to make a little harbor. When you're chaotically inclined, that is how you want to work. I found it's healthy for me to say, well, okay, this gets me really excited. And that excitement and passion drives me to create the entire game. So that's how the entire product of Bulwark and Falconeer is, instead of an architecture by a single visionary, it's just me running off doing all this weird shit and then occasionally going, okay, let me clean up, let me box it all up, connect it back. And in Bulwark, you're creating in the same way. So for some people, it's a chaotic, you know, just explore what happens, just follow the path. And that's why it's a lot more joyous than Falconeer, which was sort of dark. Just that excitement of making something and then going through the effort and discovering something else comes out, which is just exciting because you, you know, you're part of that journey. When we talk about that chaotic disposition or you know how my brain works to make things that permeates all my games they are a representation of that and, and what i like in Bulwark is that you get to taste it a little bit and and i hope because it's for me that chaos and that wanting to explore what's possible that is the core of my creativity because it's so exciting it's where the, i can't contain myself when i've got a whiff of something new